Hello, this is Hakuna Bean, and today we are going over some spooky stories from r slash paranormal because it's June. It's Pride Month, which means it is a perfect time to be spooky. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. We're just going to go ahead and open a few tabs with some... Spooky stories. I'm avoiding the debunk the stories because I don't feel like debunking things. I mean, I'm not obligated to actually do that, but you know. I just want to hear some interesting um, experiences. Not questions or people trying to get their experiences debunked, just about the experiences themselves. Huh. That's a new flyer. That's bad for now now. I don't think I said that word right. It's uh it's a pretty hard word to say. All right, after this one, we can start reading. Then we'll find some more or afterward if there's still enough time. Let's start. My grandpa's haunted house. Sorry for the long text. So I'd like to get rid of a few things about the old house of my grandfather, free history. The house was built around 200 years ago. As far as I know, but there were often soldiers since World War II and a few who were often given shelter. One disappeared after a few days without trace. It was also an old restaurant. About 40 years later, my grandpa found an old cross in the, the garbage and decided to restore it. After a few weeks, strange things happened. Mary and Jesus' picture started to sway without wind or any human influence. The whole house was shaking without wind that, that they were similar, and in Bavaria there are also no earth. Earthquakes, loud noises in my basement. My grandfather then mounted a cross on a nearby tree. Since then, it is always foggy around the tree. My grandmother had cancer and died of it. She had a phone in her room, which was only connected to the phone in the living room if she needed help. She could not call anyone else with it. A few days later, when she died, the phone rang in the living room with the number of my grandmother's phone. We answered the phone, you heard only breathing, then it hung up. First, there was no longer a connection. And to the phone downstairs, and secondly, the contract of the phone was terminated. My grandpa then died in December of 2015. Now, 2023, I myself have already experienced many things. Story 1. Me and a buddy went at, at 23 o'clock at night to the house to get something. We then got to the kitchen. To get into the kitchen, you have to go from the hallway. They left through a door, or we didn't close the door behind us. Suddenly, someone knocked. We packed, but still decided to open the door. But there was no one. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. We ran quickly back to the kitchen. After a few minutes, we heard footsteps in the front of the door. We then looked outside, but again, there was no one to see. We heard there was someone from the hallway and towards us, but there was no one to see either. We ran directly home. Story number two. A colleague and I have met in the evening, and we were... A chilling in the living room. The living room is directly connected to the kitchen. After a few minutes, we heard above us a loud bang and loud footsteps. My friend panicked and waited outside, and I went upstairs alone. And I have looked, but there was no one to find. Story number three. Once a friend and me decided to... Ooh, set up two cameras in the hallway. At the end of the hallway, there goes a door straight into the stall. All on the right, a stair. Out to the bedroom and attics. My buddy pointed his camera towards the... He stares into the beginning of the hallway. I pointed the camera from the beginning of the hallway towards the end. When we went to get at both phones, phones were on the floor with the camera pointing towards the ceiling. Both video cut off at the exact same time and both fell to the floor at the exact same time. Story number four. Me and a friend went to the house as a night. We wanted to film on the second floor. At the top of the stair, there were three doors. 
one at the front, one at the left, and one at the right. We went to the right door. At the door, there is a chair to block. A, there is a chair to block the door. So we got in the hallway, and we're at the end of right, I didn't, and left our open doors. Then we didn't have not discovered something suspicious. When we looked at the recording afterwards, you saw it in the left door a hand and a face. It was clear to see. We checked the rooms, and there was no one there. Sadly, I don't find any recordings anymore. Story number five. When my cousin and I, I were kids, we slept at my grandpa's house, then went to the toilet at night, when we suddenly heard very loud scratching on the front door. We then thought we were pranking each other, but then it happened again at the time that we were talking. My mother has lived about two months after the separation with my father or in the house because it is her parents' house. She said after a few weeks she felt very uncomfortable, not welcome, and always watched. She had many sleep paralysis. It's also heard footsteps, loud noises, etc., and quickly moved out again. Things happened again and again. Lights go on and off, doors open on their own. Things lie on the floor. Footsteps, voices, things are moving. Most of the time, the people are feeling very uncomfortable. At each visit, strange things happen. We'll spend the days in the house alone, and we'll take my camera and try to film something. I will post it here if some of you are interested. I hope y'all can help, help me slash us. To figure out what's going on. Now please let me know if someone has experienced similar things. Sorry for the spelling, I am from Germany and I tried my very best to write this text. <sighs> if they're all gonna be long like this, I might. I need to end the video oh early. Holy crap. Alright. I was tormented by a spirit during my first two years at university. In 2020, I moved over six hours away from my hometown in southern Ontario to attend a university up north. I moved into my town with my best friend from high school whom I had known for years. In his building, it is important to note that it has been around since the school was built. However, it is frequently renovated and worked on because it, more often than normal, catches fire. More details later. So since the in it's 2020, mid pandemic, and I had just been discharged from the army. My best friend and I had applied for a same university major and had decided that if we got in that we would live together. Well sure enough, we got in and the only dorm that could accommodate our room request, i.e. moving into the same apartment with several bedrooms, was situated directly across from a hospice. And for those that don't know, a hospice is a medical facility where people go when they are close to death to live out the end of their lives in as much comfort as possible. The hospice was the only view of our of our small windows, and was the only thing and was the only one in our in our area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this building frequently caught fire. What was odd, odd and worth mentioning about it was that it only caught fire in the in apartment number five on any given floor. My best friend and I lived on the fifth floor in the fifth apartment for years, even throughout the summer. Unfortunately, we never had a fire but frequently found ourselves having to accommodate firefighters and other workers entering our rooms due to smoke and water damage from various different fires from different and floors directly above us. Along with my boyfriend, I had to... Uh, along with my best friend, I had two other roommates who were very vocal about when they were at home or not. I thought that said boyfriend, I was like, oh nice. We had a, a group chat, and for all these experiences, they were never home. Or even in the city for that matter. My BFF and I both got jobs working at a level 1 trauma center as night shift security. And thus paranormal stuff didn't scare us as we frequently were forced to work in the morgue. And even witness people die on a daily basis. With a whole bunch of other things, maybe stories for another time. The main experience that happened early on was when my, my BFF and I... I both awoke to hear so I'm going through our cupboards and in garbage in the kitchen, which was right against my bedroom wall, thus making it super loud. It was about 1 p.m. and we were on night shift. It was our version of 1 a.m. So thinking my best friend had gotten up oddly early, I went to talk to her. But when I opened the door, there was no one. I woke her up quietly and we searched the entire apartment. And always with whatever we could use as weapons. There was no one, but everything was open. Our fridge, the oven, drawers, and cabinets. As well, our garbage had been thrown across the room. All the breakers in our apartment had been switched off as well. 
which we didn't discover at first. It is important to mention that the only entry into our apartment, that being the front door, automatically locked when closed, so it was most definitely locked 24-7. I called building security, and no one had been seen on camera entering our dorm, except for my BFF and me around 8am, after we had gotten off work at the hospital. There was no explanation for who had done this, but still, they took our statements and said they'd do patrols. They never found more information. Over three months later, it was somewhere under my BFF and I, ha I had been two of 11 people left in the building over the summer, with the rest being mostly just international students who could afford to do quarantine protocol us again in September as it took two weeks. We were the only ones on our floor, but regularly heard stopping outside in the hall, but neither of us as ever saw anyone through our pupils, or even when we often heard knocks on the front door. However, when we checked, no one every time. So aside from the knocking and stomping, super quiet summer, except for one warning. I'll never forget it. It shook us to the bone. It was 10 a.m. and my roommate and I were asleep after work. I never locked my bedroom door. As my BFF loved to come in and hang all the time, but some, for some reason, I locked that entire week. Good thing, too, because I awoke to frantic, and I mean frantic, knocking. No pounding on my bedroom door. I was obviously super disoriented, it, as I had just finished a 12-hour shift a few hours earlier. But I saw two dark shadows under the door resembling feet. I figured my BFF needed... It's something and woke up, but I called out before getting up because I was annoyed to be awake this early. My feet stayed on moving, but the knocking stopped. With a heavy sigh, I got on up, threw on a sweater, and checked the time. It was around 10 a.m. I went to open the door. With the shadow still there, I assumed it was my BFF. When I put my, my door... When I put my hand on the, the handle to unlock it, I heard a thud, and then worried it if my BFF had fallen, I threw the door open to see my front door closing as if someone was just leaving. I ran over and saw a completely black figure turn the corner. I followed my security guard instincts kicking in, but when I turned the, the corner, nothing. I went back, and my roommate asked why I was knocking on the walls like that. She heard from inside my room on an adjoining shared wall to both our bedrooms. We again called security, but only I was seen chasing after nothing on the cameras. After my boyfriend, a firefighter, started at sleeping over frequently because as we both spooked, the fire stopped and most other things said too. We never had an, another incident in, on this level. We moved out after two years there and beyond hearing the usual bang, no other issues. And also for a detail I forgot to add is that we had an anti-break in security state egg against our front door while we slept. They were conveniently moved into the living room or against the wall after these events. We also tested the stick to see if it actually worked, and trust me, even my firefighter our boyfriend and his BFF couldn't force their way in. Yeah, sounds like you've got a poultry, guys. Are they all long stories? Dang, this separate suddenly you got uh, real good. Anyway, I apologize in advance for how long this is. Oh dear, this is going to be a long one. Thank you to anyone that reads all of it and has advice or knowledge on what this is. My husband and I have been together since we were 16. We are now 24 with ki with two kids. This was sorry before I met him. His stepmom came into the fiction and when he was around 13 and brought her or what my husband described as a satanic book. Okay... Because satanic books are always the creepy ones, not like like we have the Bible, which literally describes angels in the most terrifying way possible, which is why they look the way they do in the in Genesis Evangelion. But go off, I guess. It gave everyone the grief, and my SO's dad decided to burn it, which resulted in its ear piercing screams when it hit the fire. This sounds completely fake, but let's keep me reading. After that, they started experiencing strange activities such as items being moved. The most unexplainable was a laundry effort that was found on top of the roof. His sister also had an experience being woken up to a black figure hovering over her, choking her. Her boyfriend at that time witnessed this. When my husband and I got together, I spent many nights with him. I always had a bad feeling over there. 
But what changed me from a skeptic to a believer was when I had placed my phone on a TV, and I made it later by as I oh and and I watched my phone fall from the ceiling in the corner of the uh, of the room. We moved into our first apartment ever in 2018. Whatever was as follows, and the activity went from sparse to almost daily. Unexplained footsteps, items not being where they should be, cabinets opening and slamming shut, doors opening and closing, we moved in 2019 and were followed by this entity again. Nothing about the type of, of activity changed, but this was when it started showing itself to us. The first time, my husband and I were relaxed on a couch, which faced towards, towards our dining area. The kitchen was beyond, behind the wall of where our TV it, it was set up. I'm not sure what compelled me to stop our conversation and look in that direction. But what I saw chose me to just say. Peeking out from behind the wall that separates the living room and kitchen was a shadow figure of a tall man. It stayed long enough for me to get a good look at it, and know without a doubt, it wasn't my imagination. As soon as it noticed I saw it, it pulled itself back from the wall. During the moment, I was more curious than afraid and pursued it. There was nothing in the kitchen. When I think about it now, I wonder just how many times this thing, thing was spying on us. Why would it pull itself back from the kitchen instead of, of disappear right then? Did it want me to follow it? Creepy. Thing is, sometimes I see my own freaking hair in my peripheral vision and I get s and I <coughs> Frick, there I go, choking on air. No, I like, I think I am seeing something out of the corner of my eye and it's like really creepy. Anyway. Shortly after this <clears throat> incident, my daughter was born. The activity got worse again. It became a nightly occurrence that her, her door would open by itself. This also happened during her naps. The only was my husband now seeing this figure too, but sorry, touching us and being vocal. One night, while laying in bed, I dropped my phone off the bed. While laying down to grab it, I felt a hand stroke my arm. I had also often feel like my husband was getting in bed with me and hear breathing in my ear only to roll over and find myself alone. My husband also had his foot grabbed one night while playing video games. Night was when most, yeah, most of the activity happened. Our daughter was waking up screaming over 20 times at night. Her doctor said it was the worst sleep regression he, she's ever heard of. We moved again in 2021. Our first this night being there, I was unpacking the kitchen while my husband was putting our daughter down for bed. I turned to see a huge shadow of a man go from one of the kitchen to the other and disappear. Another night, we were woken up to bang on our walls, which faded in, out into tapping. This was a wall that separated our room from our daughter's room. My husband decided to go tap back, and a time would repeat. I repaired my husband and did. We let our daughter sleep in our room on that night, and we woke her up. She pointed to the door and told us there was a man. We moved in 2022, our current residence. I'm not sure what has changed, but the activity comes and goes now. Sometimes there will be very little activity for months, and then it's a rush of seeing figures, doors opening and closing in front of us, etc. I said this activity does pick up during stressful times. Our daughter... Er is now four and will occasionally bring up the shadow that visits during the night. It's never harmed us and we've lived with this for so long. It's more like an noisy roommate at this point. Do we continue to coexist? Get answers? Ignore it? <sighs> when I was felt a presence as a child, but the experience was anything but scary. When I was a kid, maybe around 12 years old, I remember waking up in the middle of the night. I was suddenly wide awake, but it was pitch black and silent, so I wasn't sure why I was suddenly fully conscious. I felt the urge to sit up and I stayed at the end of my bed. I couldn't see anything, but somehow I knew someone was there. I could tell it was as an elderly lady, even though I couldn't see or hear anything. I felt like she was sitting down and looking over the top of me and out of my bedroom window. 
but that she was there to keep me company. I then recall speaking out loud, saying something like, Hello there, who are you? Again, I felt like I needed stress, none of my regular senses could detect anything, but I could just feel that she was there and what she was doing. After a few moments, I laid back down and closed my eyes, and it fell immediately back to sleep. I felt so calm and safe, and I slept so well. Even as I write this 15 years later, I feel grateful and a little emotional about the whole thing. It was such a pleasant feeling. Anyway, I couldn't stop thinking about it, and even though it sounded silly to say out loud, I felt sorry about what had happened, so... Oh, I told my mom about it. She proceeded to tell me that she knew the old lady who had lived in the house before us, and she used to be a teacher. Her name was Mrs. Furnish. Apparently, when I was a baby, Miss Evador heard me and loved to hold me and talk to me. She died when I was still very young, though, so I have no memory of her. Apparently, what was now my bedroom used to be Mrs. F's room, and she would spend hours sitting looking out of her bedroom window at fields behind the house. I had no idea about any of these things, but I feel like I met Mrs. F that night, and the description of my mom gave felt just right. There's not much of a point to all, all of this other than just to put my experience into words and share it with y'all. Thanks for listening. That's very sweet. <clears throat> just need to take a drink here. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Screw up my model entirely. Anyway. Grandpa told things he couldn't possibly know. This story happened about twelve years ago, and I still can't determine how it was possible. Backstory. The family on my mother's side didn't get along with my dad and his family, and eventually my mom decided to break up every contact with them. This was in the eighties. Due to this breakup, I've never met my grandfather and grandmother of my mother's side. Fast forward to 2011. The grandfather mentioned above was dying from lung cancer and was trying to make amends with my mother and the rest of his sons and daughters. My mother decided to let go of the past and take care of my grandfather while he was still alive. Eventually, he asked my mom if, if, it, was, if it would be possible to meet his grandsons. My mom let me decide whether I would go or not. I chose to grant his dying wish, since I was curious who my granddad was. Honestly, a mom shouldn't really keep their their um kids from seeing their grandparents unless their grandparents are super abusive, like physically abusive and and stuff. I mean, heck, my mom was raised by a narcissist, and I saw saw my grandma every summer. Anyway. Eventually, he asked my mom if it would be possible to meet his grandsons. My mom let me decide whether or I would go or not, and I chose to grant his dying wish since I was curious who my granddad was. A little more dex, or he had a girlfriend back then whom I gave a ring on one of our anniversaries. This happened in a theme park. Ultimately, she lost that ring when she went to a party. I tried contacting the place where it was hosted to see if they found it, but to no avail. Back to the story. When I visited him with my mom, I felt like I known him. I knew him my entire lifetime. A little later that afternoon, he was given morphine because he was very much in pain. Eventually, he went to, into sleep. When he woke up some time later, he mentioned he had a dream. He dreamt about a girl who had a very nice ring, but she ultimately lost it in a theme park or amusement park. According to him, the crowd trampled the ring as it, and it was nowhere to be found. My mom and, and I realized the coincidence and were baffled about it, but didn't give it much attention. Eventually, when we left, he said something nobody except my mom and dad knew at the time. Backstory Part 3. Ten years earlier, around 2000 or 2001, my dad used to work for a company which tried to fire him. And his dad died to use that situation to fire him because he wasn't performing well. 
At one day during that period, when he was driving home, my dad thought of ending his life moving on a highway. That scared so much, I took sick leave and went to a psychiatrist to deal with it. Again, only my mom and dad knew about this episode. Back to the story. At the end of the day, when we were leaving, my grandpa pulled my mother close to him and whispered in her ear. Don't let your husband end his life on that highway. It won't solve any of his problems. He's much stronger than that. Please let him know. We really don't know what to think of those moments. There wasn't any contact with that part of the family, but somehow he knew about these se about those separate events. Also during the day, he kept talking about a man with a cape walking around in his living room, and he knew that when he would be able to grab his cape, he would be taken to the other side of by that man. Anyone else had such events while visiting a dying relative? Um, no, not really. I know that, um, actually, I don't think I really want to uh, talk bad since that's not my story to tell, and it will reveal too much about who I am in real life. Anyway, unusual experience. When I was a child back in the 80s, at around 5 or 6 years old, I had an interesting experience. We lived a small two-bedroom house on a dead-end street, North Main, in the historical town of Collierville, Tennessee. The town played a small role during the Civil War. It just so happened that Civil War Hospital was positioned somewhere around the area where we lived. The exact location wasn't known, but historian and knew it was close to the street we lived on. It was so close, you could actually go out in the yard and dig randomly and find Civil War artifacts, such as vintage apothecary bottles, musket shot, uniform buttons, etc. It was actually really neat. We often had people digging in our yard, or our neighbor's yard, by people using metal detectors. We found cannonballs and other Civil War pieces, but back to my experience. So just my mother and I had at home at this point during the day. My sister is at school and my father is at work. My mother is in the living room and I am playing alone in my bedroom. I remember being on my hands and knees playing with my little Hot Wheels car. I recall pushing my little car along on it at coming to a black boot in front of me, like someone is standing in front of me while I am on my hands and knees. I looked up and remember seeing a man in all black. Black boots, pants, long overcoat, a tall black top hat. It was as if a man in period the clothing was standing in my room. I can't recall seeing any facial features, but I stood up and walked into the living room. I asked my mother who the man in my room playing with me was. He quickly scooped me out of and scared me outside and went to the neighbors to use their phone. So my mother calls my father at work and tells us to come home if someone is in the house. My mother could see the house from neighbors so she could tell if anyone left or went in, my, in our home. My father worked less than and two miles from home, so he arrived in no time. He went in the house and searched and found no one. Of course, they questioned me about the incident, and all I could explain to them is exactly as I said before. They asked if he touched me, and I told them no. They asked was I scared of him, or if I was fearful to go back into my room by myself, and I told them no. The incident wasn't scary or frightening. The man had given me a friendly vibe. We have spoke about that experience many times over the years. As a child, I was friends with lying or making things up. That's why it robbed my mother so much, and she just grabbed me and took off out of the house. I'm not one to believe in the supernatural, but this is one experience I had I can never explain. Huh. I knew my aunt was pregnant before she knew. My aunt got pregnant when I was two. She was only a week or two pregnant. But I kept saying to her, her name, baby. She took pregnancy tests a few weeks later when she missed her period, and she was pregnant. Maybe there's more interesting stories in the comments. My dad and I had seen each other in a while, maybe a month, when I found out I was pregnant with my oldest. I was 17 at the time, and I was terrified to tell my dad. They I told him his response was, I know, your grandma told me last night. My grandma has been dead for a few years at that point. 
My mom knew who before I did it too, but that was different. Crazy lady had been monitoring my cycle. Weird and kind of creepy. Anyway. Just two more, and I think I'm going to end the video because this is already long as heck. Hand prints on my window. I'm not the biggest believer in the paranormal, but I just don't have a logical explanation for this one small occurrence other than a ghost. When I was in middle school, my dad had just dropped me off at home as per usual before leaving to go back to work. I was tired and decided to take a short nap. It ended up waking up around 6 p.m. It was winter in Canada, so it was already pitch black outside. I got something to eat and just carried out as I normally would. Maybe one or two hours later, I went back to my room and sat at the end of my bed, just scrolling on my phone. I quickly started to feel extremely cold, and that's when I noticed my window a panel was open all the way, where my bed faces the window. I thought that was kind of odd, and I don't remember opening the window at all, especially since it was freezing cold outside. It was also weird that the temperature didn't wake me up, as I am a fairly light sleeper and the cold wave will can in me for my nap for sure. That time I shrugged it off and got up to shut my window. When I closed it, that's when I saw two large handprints planted right in the middle of the pane. Immediately, I was horrified I ran out of my room and sat in the kitchen, clutching a knife while face having my friend telling her what I just saw. I just sat there and waited until my parents got home from work, maybe three hours later. When they got home, I got the courage to head back into my room and take a closer look at the window. The handprints were way too big to be mine or my mom's. And that was my dad since he had not been in my room, to my knowledge. And it would be unnatural to open or close a window I plant your hands flat on the middle of the glass plane. I also thought that this was some prank they were playing, or as they were highly religious and didn't find any humor in joking around with this kind of stuff. I distinctly remember taking several photos of my hand prints on my phone and saying to my friend, for the past few years, I haven't been able to find them anywhere. It was as if those photos were erased from my phone stream in our chat log. I didn't touch my window for like two weeks. It was when I was cleaning my room that I finally decided to wipe the hand prints off. That's when I realized the hand prints were on the inside of the window, not the outside. This was about seven years ago, and I still don't understand what happened. I realized the possibility of it being my parents, and I still don't have any other sibling, any siblings that live with me. I also have a lot of the majority of the day. It could have possibly been an intruder, which honestly frightens me more. However, I live on the second story of, of an apartment building, so I doubt anyone managed to get in or out without waking me. Again, I'm a very light sleeper. I always wake up immediately when I send somebody in my room. My parents. Also, nothing was stolen or broken. Neither me nor my dog were harmed. I hate to say this, but I doubt in a true order would leave us sleep. The frick? Okay. Would leave a sleepy 13 year old girl who's alone home, un who's home alone un untouched. I had other small experiences I've jokingly chalked up as a work of ghosts before. I saw the sound of scratching or tapping in my room at night. Every single figure in the corners of my eyes. However, I've just satisfied those with logical reasoning, such as rats or my brain playing tricks for me. With this occurrence, however, I just can't come up with any explanation. I know I didn't hallucinate it since I have a witness. As for the photos, it's possible I could have accidentally deleted them or lost them while switching to a new phone. But they still should have been in me my friend's chat log. This doesn't keep me up at night, but it still doesn't make sense to me. Let me know if any of you have an explanation for this or similar experiences. Well, that was weird. Kind of just like saw a random flash of light on my wall. Probably from a passing car outside. And finally we have an interesting experience. When I was a child in the 80s, at around 5 or 6 years old, I had an interesting experience. We lived in a small two-bedroom house on a dead-end street, 225 North Main in the historical old town of Collierville, Tennessee. 
Huh. That's... Yikes. I think you just... I think you just broke the number one rule of Reddit. Don't dox yourself. What the heck? The town played a small role during the Civil War. They just so happened that Civil War hospital was positioned somewhere around the area where we lived. The exact location wasn't known, but historians knew it was close to the street we lived on. It was so close we could actually go out in the yard and dig randomly. It fights it was. Wait. Well, that's weird. I already read this story. Um... Guess we'll do one about shadow people because that's a little bit interesting. But this is the last one because I think I'm running out of time and... The prolonged silence is starting to get to me. Anyway, fire shadow being. I see shadow people or are a popular sight nowadays, so I like to go, ooh, ooh, no, oh, they don't ever encounter a kind of shadow that glows red, or rather red light that doesn't illuminate. It's not being per se, because they are, there is a, not necessarily a shape visible, but someone said on YouTube that Frigate Kruger was inspired by shadow people of this type, because they are a fire red shadow. Anyway, any, anyhow, any input would be appreciated, thanks. I don't know what's with the popularity of shadow people. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? All I know is that I'm going for today. So until tomorrow, I have to say goodbye.